Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this one I am talking about Azure Blob Storage. So with Azure Blob Storage you can upload any kind of files, for example PDFs, images or videos to the Azure Cloud. For that you need to create an Azure Storage account in your Azure portal. In the Azure Storage account you can create containers, which are like folders, and contain the blobs, which are your files. You can set the access level of containers and files to permit public access or to restrict access. The containers and blobs are available via a URL which contains the storage account name, the container name and the blob name. The upload and delete of blobs is always restricted. Azure provides an Azure Blob Storage JavaScript library to use Azure Blob Storage. You can create, read, list and delete containers and blobs. Some of the functionalities work only in Node.js runtime and not in the browser. The authentication methods, which require some kind of secret, do not work in the browser runtime. For the browser application, you must also configure cross-origin resource sharing in the Azure Blob Storage account. In this video, I will integrate the Azure Blob Storage library in an Angular application and I will use the shared access signature token to gain restricted access. So let us start creating a storage account. For that, you must be logged in in the Azure portal. And in the search field, you can search for storage account. And in this view, you can just simply click on add. So here, just select your subscription, your resource group, give the storage account a decent name, select location, replication performance, and don't forget to change the account type to blob storage. There are also several other settings like networking, data protection, advanced settings. For the time being, you can just keep the default settings. And then just click on create and wait for a while until it is ready to go. After the deployment has been completed, you can just go to the resource. At first, let us take care of the cross-origin resource sharing, here under settings and cores. Here I have permitted everything with wildcards. It is not secure, but ok for testing. Let us now create containers, here under blob service and containers. Let me add a container with this one. I say it is pictures. Then click on create. And also add, I add another container for videos. We can now start uploading files. Let's go and upload some pictures. I go into the container, and then I click here on Upload. And let me select a picture, this one here, and click on Upload. And also let's upload a video. And now I have a picture in the Pictures container, and I have a video in the Videos container. With default settings, the read access to the blobs is restricted. Let's verify that by calling this URL. It contains my storage account name, it contains the container name and the blob name. And it says resource not found. Let us change the access level of the containers. We can do that by selecting the containers and then click here on change access level. And here you have different kind of levels. You can change the anonymous read access level for blobs only. That means anonymous users can read the blobs only. Or you can change it so that anonymous readers can also read containers and blobs. And by reading containers, the user can enumerate all blobs in the container. Let me change it to the container level. And after that, let's call the URL again. And there you go, I can see the picture. Now let me open the video in the browser. In the URL I change the container name to videos and then the blob name is the video name. And there you go, I can see the video. Alright, let us use those resources in the web application. I have created a new Angular project with a blank white page. And just now I have added an HTML image and an HTML video element. The source of the image is the blob within my pictures container. And the source of the video is the blob within my videos container. So let me save that and verify that it works correctly. So 
so Azure Blob Storage is a good way to provide content for your web pages. So let us now start using the Azure Blob Storage JavaScript library. For that I am using this npm install command to install the library. This library is not Angular specific. It does not provide a service. For that I am creating my own Angular service with the ng-cli. So within that service I first import the required modules. The blob service client and the container client. Then I set variables for the account name and the container name. Here I am using only the pictures container. I want to focus on listing blobs within the container and downloading a blob. So I provide a method to create a container client. Here I create a new blob service client by providing the URL to my storage account with my storage account name. And with the method getContainerClient I provide the conti container name. I define a public method to return a list of all blobs within that container. I use the client and call the listBlobsFlat method to retrieve all blobs. Then I iterate all blobs and push the name of the blob into the result array. After that I create a public method to download the blob. The method requires a name of the blob and a handler function for the downloaded blob content. On the container client I call the method getBlobClient with the blob name to get a blob client. With that blob client I use the download method to download the blob asynchronously and when it has been finished I pass the blob to the handler function. Now I can use that blob service within my Angular component classes. Here I have injected it in my constructor. I have created a string array member to store the pictures names list. Then I just created a method called reloadImagesList to load the pictures list and store them in the string array. I call that method when the component has been initialized. I have also created a method to download a picture given a blob name. I just call the blob service to download the blob. And then in the blob handler function, I create a URL for the blob and open it in the browser. So now in the HTML template, I just list all blob names of the picture container in the table. And I also provide a download button. So let's save that and see the result. This is the list of the pictures and the download button and I can see the picture. Let us upload some more pictures to the container in the Azure portal and see the result in our Angular application. Now I have three pictures. And in the result list you can see all three pictures and can download them. Maybe we would like to upload and delete pictures from our Angular application. These operations are restricted. However, we can use a short term solution, the shared access signatures. The shared access signatures, short SAS, are tokens which have attached permissions and an expiration timestamp. You can attach these tokens to the blob storage URL as query parameters. You can generate an SAS token in the Azure portal on a container. Here I select the pictures container and then in the context menu, generate SAS. Here you can select the permissions which you want, read, add, create, write, delete and list. Also note that it has an expiration date. It expires in a couple of hours. Click on Generate SAS Token and URL. And down here you have that SAS token for your blobs. Just copy it and later we can use it in the Angular application. I would like to use that SAS token to delete and upload pictures. I extend my blob service such that I can provide the token as a parameter for the container client. I attach the token as a query parameter to the storage URL. So with that I can add a delete image method to my service. 
It requires an SAS token, the name of the blob and the handler function. I create a container client with that SAS token. I call the delete blob method with the blob name and then call the handler function. And I have also created an upload image method. It requires also an SAS token, the blob, the name of the blob and also a handler function. Again, I create a client with the SAS token and create a blob client with the blob name. On the blob client, I can call the method upload data. I provide the blob and also some parameters. It is also important to set the blob content type such that images and videos will be recognized correctly. Check the blob properties and verify that the blob content is correct. Here, for example, for this blob, see the properties. And it says the content type is image PNG. So that means this blob is a PNG image. So finally, after the blob has been uploaded, I call the handler function. Within the Angular component class, I define a member to store the SAS token. So now I can create a delete method to delete the picture with the SAS token and the picture name. The handler function reloads and refreshes the pictures list. I also create a method to upload a picture. This will get a file from a file chooser. I call the upload method of the service with the token, the file as a blob and the file name. The handler function will reload and refresh the pictures list. Now we can extend our HTML template. I have created a table here. At first I create an input field to set the SAS token. It's this one. And also I display the current SAS token. So let's save this and take a look at the result. Now I can enter here the SAS token. I confirm with enter. And that's the current SAS token. And I have added a delete button for each blob picture. This way I can delete every picture individually. Let's try the delete with our SAS token. Here I am in the pictures container. Let me refresh the content and you see I have three pictures. And I go back to my Angular application and I can delete pictures. So I delete two pictures and let's go back to the pictures container and refresh the content and you see I only have one picture left. So the delete is working properly now. Also I have added a file input field. This way I get a file chooser in the web page. In the change event, I pass the selected file to the component class. The file is uploaded via the blob service. So let's verify that it works correctly. Let's go back to the container in the Azure portal. I refresh the content, I, I see I only have one picture. Let me use the file chooser to upload more pictures. I want this picture and I already see it in the list. And I also add another picture, this one and also this one. And let's go back to the container view and refresh. And you see I have four pictures. Let me check the properties. And you see the content type is of type image PNG. You can also use the SAS token to access private blobs. Let me change the access level of the container to private again. And I set it to private. This way I cannot access the blobs anymore. If I use the token as a query parameter, then I can access the blob again. So that's it with the video. Now you know basics of Azure Blob Storage. There are more things to know about Blob Storage. For example, having several snapshots or versions of blobs. Thanks for watching and have a beautiful day.